Hello again. This time we're going to do a lesson about a letter written by one of my favorite authors, Kurt Vonnegut. The letter is called I Am Very Real. And let me share my screen with you so we can talk a little bit about this before you guys read it. So like I said, this letter is called I Am Very Real. And we're going to use what we learned in the last lesson about rhetorical analysis when we read this letter. Um, it's, like I said, by American author Kurt Vonnegut. He was born in 1922. He passed away in 2007. I had posted a video about him in this lesson if you're interested in learning a little bit more about who he was. Um, like I said, he is one of my favorite authors. Um, we unfortunately aren't going to be able to read his books in our class, but hopefully you guys will get to read him at some point in high school. If you don't get the opportunity to, I highly suggest that you seek it out. Um, this is a letter written after um, an English teacher at Drake High School in 1973 decided to teach Vonnegut's novel Slaughterhouse Five. Slaughterhouse Five is probably his most famous novel. A lot of um, high school students read this and learn it. I know I did when I was in high school. Um, it's a very different novel from what we are used to reading a lot of times. Um, in 1973, when this teacher decided to teach it at his high school, um, a man named Charles McCarthy, who was the head of their school board, decided that the novel's obscene language was not appropriate for students. All of the school's copies of the books were burned. This caused an outrage in the nation. Um, it was big news. I actually, when I was looking up um, about, you know, how I wanted to teach this lesson, I found an article in the local newspaper about this incident and the people in this town were kind of confused about why people were so upset that they burned these books and Vonnegut wrote a letter to Mr. McCarthy as a response to this happening and this is what we're going to read. So what you need to understand is that a teacher wanted to teach this book by Kurt Vonnegut. The book is called Slaughterhouse Five. Um, the school board decided that this book was not appropriate and all of the copies of the book were burned. And Mr. Vonnegut um, wrote this letter as a response. So when we read this, I'm going to read it first in this video so you guys can read along with me. What you guys need to do is read and annotate your own copies. So you can annotate while I read it you can listen first and then go back and annotate it later. Um, but you need to annotate your copies. Now I have um, the link in Kami, so you can use Kami if you want to. I know a lot of you guys like it. If you are not a fan of Kami or if it's not working for you, there's a PDF version as well and you can annotate it in your own way. What you all need to do is define any unfamiliar words that you come across. One of the good things about Vonnegut is that he doesn't use complicated or tricky language. He's not one of those authors who just uses big words to sound smart. Um, he uses very accessible language, um, but that doesn't mean that we're not going to run into words that we don't know or aren't sure about. So even if you think you know, it's a good idea to just look it up, especially since it's so easy to do in Kami. Um, also, highlight the main ideas. What's he talking about? Um, I've already given you a little bit of backstory about this letter and the incident that happened that caused him to write the letter. So when you're looking, um, think about that in the back of your mind. Keep that, keep that there and then highlight the main ideas. Look for how he uses his rhetoric. See if you can notice it while you're reading and make notes about your thoughts. A lot of you guys like to summarize paragraphs. That's fantastic. Be sure you summarize those paragraphs. If you have a thought about something he says, do you agree with something he says? Do you disagree with something he says? Do you think he makes a good point? Um, make those notes in there. And then always keep in mind the lessons that we learned about rhetoric. How does Vonnegut use ethos, pathos, and logos in his letter? 
he's not going to tell you that he's using them. He's just such a skilled writer that it is a part of how he writes. So what you guys need to do is look for those tools in this letter. After we read it um, and annotate it, the next part is the quiz. So remember, when we're talking about rhetorical analysis, how the writer writes, how the author writes is just as important as what he says. So it's not enough to just have a good point. It's not enough to be right. You have to say it in an effective way. And that's what this is all about. So the good thing is that we get to read letters and writings by fantastic authors um, like Mr. Vonnegut. And we're going to see how he uses these rhetorical appeals, how he uses logos, pathos, and ethos. And um, we're going to learn a lot from how he does it. Uh, this is another quote from him that I like as well. If you guys are in person and you've seen um, my classroom, he is on my door this grading period. Last time we had Maya Angelou, this time we have Kurt Vonnegut. Um, and he says, practice any art, music, singing, dancing, acting, drawing, painting, sculpting, poetry, fiction, essays, reportage, no matter how well or badly, not to get money or fame, but to experience becoming, to find out what's inside you to make your soul grow. And I think that's just a fantastic um, idea, just to do these things because they make you a better person, not just because they make you a better person, but they make you more of who you are, find out who you are through doing these things. So anyway, that one's kind of beside the point, but right now I'm gonna go over to Cami and I'm going to read this letter. So remember, we are thinking about um, unfamiliar words, main ideas, how he uses ethos, pathos, and logos. And then we're going to make notes about what we think. So I'm going to read it. Then you guys can go through um, on your own time and annotate. So remember, this was written in 1973 in response to a school um, burning his books. This is uh, Kurt Vonnegut speaking. Dear Mr. McCarthy, I am writing to you in your capacity as chairman of the Drake School Board. I am among those American writers whose books have been destroyed in the now famous furnace of your school. Certain members of your community have suggested that my work is evil. This is extraordinarily insulting to me. The news from Drake indicates to me that books and writers are very unreal to you people. I am writing this letter to let you know how real I am. I want you to know too that my publisher and I have done absolutely nothing to exploit the disgusting news from Drake. We are not clapping each other on the back, crowing about all the books we will sell because of the news. We have declined to go on television. We have written no fiery letters to editorial pages, have granted no lengthy interviews. We are angered and sickened and saddened and no copies of this letter have been sent to anybody else. You now hold the only copy in your hands. It is a strictly private letter from me to the people of Drake who have done so much damage to my reputation in the eyes of their children and then in the eyes of the world. Do you have the courage and ordinary decency to show this letter to people or will it too be consigned to the fires of your furnace? I gather from what I read in the newspapers and hear on television that you imagine me and some other writers too as being sort of rat-like people who enjoy making money from poisoning the minds of young people. I am in fact a large, strong person, 51 years old, who did a lot of farm work as a boy, who is good with tools. I have raised six children, three of my own and three adopted. They have all turned out well. Two of them are farmers. I'm a combat infantry veteran from World War II and hold a Purple Heart. I have earned whatever I own by hard work. I have never been arrested or sued for anything. I am so much trusted with young people and by young people that I have served on the faculties of the University of Iowa, Harvard, and the City College of New York. 
every year I receive at least a dozen invitations to be commencement speaker at colleges and high schools. My books are probably more widely used in school than any of those other living American fiction writers. If you were to bother to read my books to behave as an educated person would, you would learn that they are not sexy and do not argue in favor of wildness of any kind. They beg that people be kinder and more responsible than they often are. It is true that some of the characters speak coarsely. That is because people speak coarsely in real life, especially soldiers and hardworking men speak coarsely and even our most sheltered children know that. And we all know too that those words don't really damage children much. They didn't damage us when we were young. It was evil deeds and lying that hurt us. After I have said all this, I am sure you are still ready to respond in effect. Yes, yes, but it still remains our right and our responsibility to decide what books our children are going to be made to read in our community. This is surely so. But it is also true that if you exercise that right and fulfill that responsibility in an ignorant, harsh, un-American manner, then people are entitled to call you bad citizens and fools. Even your own children are entitled to call you that. I read in the newspaper that your community is mystified by the outcry from all over the country about what you have done. Well, you have discovered that Drake is part of an American civilization and your fellow Americans can't stand it that you have beha behaved in such an uncivilized way. Perhaps you will learn from this that books are sacred to free men for very good reasons and that wars have been fought against nations which hate books and burn them. If you are an American, you must allow all ideas to circulate freely in your community not merely your own. If you and your board are now determined to show that you in fact have wisdom and maturity when you exercise your power over the education of your young, then you should acknowledge that it was a rotten lesson you taught young people in a free society when you denounced and burned books, books you hadn't even read. You should also resolve to expose your children to all sorts of opinions and information in order that they will be better equipped to make decisions and to survive. Again, you have insulted me and I am a good citizen and I am very real. Kurt Vonnegut. So now that we have read that together, go back and look at your own copy, read it again use the highlighting tools. We've got all our tools on the side. You can use uh, the drawing tools, the highlighting tools, different colors. You have underlines. You can make comments. Remember there's a dictionary here, so if you're not sure what a word means, you can look it up here in the dictionary. And I hope you guys enjoy that letter as much as I. Um, look for ethos pathos and logos. How does he establish his authority? How does he use ethos? How does he appeal to the values of his audience? And how does he organize? How does he use logic and reason and facts in his argument? Think about those things, read and annotate your copy, and then go on to the quiz. Um, again, you can only take the quiz once, so be sure you go slow and careful. You can use your notes if you want to, um, and I hope you guys do really well. Thank you.